Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Nornrad89 here with a special guest today. I have Steve from Voices from Mausoleum joining me to start a new series that we are going to be doing. We are going to be talking about Courage, the Cowardly Dog, a really fun TV show nostalgia that just calls back to our younger years that we wanted to talk about. And this is a really cool thing to talk about because this is like introduction horror as well. So Steve, thank you for joining me. Of course, you know, we've had you on voices. I was like, I I, I got to come on now. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's a blast. I've been really excited to do this. Like I said, we were supposed to do this last Monday, but, you know, work and everything for me got a little chaotic and stuff. So we had to postpone. But now we are joining together to do this. And then now also, if you have anything you want to plug or anything you want to talk about that you want to that's coming up on voices, please let us know now if you want to talk about that. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I mean, so Voices from the Mausoleum, it's it, me and Angel, who started the channel. I came on September, but I feel like time's flying already. Uh, I know. Uh, we're, I know we're almost April already. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, we have our regular uh, found footage Fridays. We're in the middle of our paranormal activity uh, look back. Uh, we have, I think we just had uh, the marked ones. And uh, now it's up. Yeah, Ghost Dimension will be next. And uh, I don't know when this episode is coming going out. But so the, this the Friday, uh, the twenty second will be uh, Ghost Dimension, and then uh, Friday the 29th will be next of kin. And then we're gonna move on to some other exciting found footage films. Um, outside of that, we've been covering. Uh, we've been doing uh, women in horror shout outs all month, which has been really fun. Uh, just shouting out women in the horror community um, who really boost up, you know, each other's voices and who really just add like just a strong sense of positivity um, and just make this community what it is. So we've been doing that series this month. And yeah, you know, we have our co Coffee Crypt Horror News every other Sunday. I'm going to be trying to do a little bit more of that. We've had you on for some episodes yeah, of that, that right? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we're definitely, we're also trying to uh, boost the number of coffee crips to weekly, uh, where every other one will be sort of a coffee break. So it's just sort of a coffee crip mini, just 15, 20 minutes of probably just me with a cup of coffee, chit chatting <laughs> to myself. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but other than that, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you just have a little nice little cup of coffee and just rant about what's going on. That sounds good. Yeah, it's always fun to have that stuff. We always appreciate the content. Like I said, the fact that you guys share out so much positivity and are able to and promoting other people in the community. It's such a great thing to have, you know. Absolutely. You know, I think it's it's not a, much of a community without, you know, the community, right? It's the, you know, right. the, it, it's made up of people. We have to celebrate each other. That's what makes it special. Of course. You know, just because we're really, just because we like horror doesn't mean, you know, we're a bunch of um, you know. I was going to curse, but you know, a blanks. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you want to curse. It's because we're talking about courage. You're fine. I do. I do curse on my channel, but yeah, like, cause we're talking about courage. Maybe we'll keep it a little, a little PG today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But since we were, like I said, we're diving into Courage the Cowardly Dog, this is a show that actually started on Cartoon Network. The pilot episode did premiere in 1996, and the pilot episode was the chicken from outer space, where Courage has to basically stop an outer space chicken from taking over the world. And this was actually where you could find this one is at the home video release of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. This was a special episode that was on there as like a special feature. I think after the end of the movie, you could actually watch this episode. So that's where you can check out the pilot. But we are going off of HBO Max, just in case anybody who's watching now, right now, or in the future, we're going to be going off of the episode list for HBO Max. So that's the order that we're going to be going in and talking about for these for these segments and stuff like that. So today we're going to talk about episode one, two, and three, which each have two segments involved in each of them. So I'll introduce, let's see, we're, let's bring up the chat real quick, that way I can talk about it. And we're going to talk about our very first episode, which is The Shadow of Courage, which is a wealthy miser dies alone in an observatory, releasing his playful shadow who plays tricks and pranks aplenty on the Densians of nowhere. So... This is really a fun episode just because as an introduction one, what did you think about it, Steve? Well, right off the hop, I'm like, 
all right, so some dude's dying on this show. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're going into a dark place for this cartoon, right, right off the bat here. Uh, but it, yeah, no, it was super fun. Um, I loved the uh, just kind of you know, I, I watched Shadow as I watched, I watched Courage as a kid. Uh, but you know, it just you forget so much over the years. So you're like getting reacquainted with the tone with uh the characters and how they interact it's just super fun um i love the way that courage tries to communicate <laughs> with oh yeah I know, so much. <laughs> like just forget how adorable it is and just like the the, the gibberish and the quasi like you know audible english <laughs> yeah and I like uh, how he does kind of like the <clears throat> the Scooby Doo thing where he kind of mimics the monsters or like kind of yes. looks like them a little bit, you know, like <laughs> to like an extreme. I mean, he's like full on morphing into things. <laughs> oh yeah, I know for real. like Gumby or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, do they do Marilyn used to see this? Is this just sort of like for us to like you know appreciate what he's trying to get across? <laughs> but no, it's really funny and. um you know, just as for like the first villain that we're seeing going back into the series, uh, the shadow's a lot of fun. Uh, the, there was this one scene that uh, when Shadow is um, toying with uh, Courage, and he's like showing like all these like morbid things that he's going to do to Mario. <laughs> for real, I know. I was like, they had some like saw like traps going on in the shadow <laughs> sequences. He like full on decapitates Muriel in the shadows. <laughs> like, this is twisted. Yeah, I know. Especially when you like rewatching it now, I'm like, dang! Like this show was very progressive, like in a lot of ways in terms of like what it showed. Even like you said, in tone, the colorization of the show and the way it was very dark and very dreary. They really leaned into the the horror in this show for real, but it had such a lighthearted nature to it. It's so hard to describe at the same time, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So as far as like a first segment going back into it, how do you feel like this being the first one we're, we're, we're talking about? I think it's just very interesting that like I like said, Courage sticks out so much. He's such a wholesome character and you just really want to root for this character and like that he cares so much about his owners even though eustace is like absolutely like the worst like he's probably one of the worst characters or worst owners you could ever have but i love seeing courage just be so down to protect them like no matter what like he is honorable to a fault like this is his family this is his home he's protecting his property and i like the fact that sometimes you end up finding out that the villains aren't always the villains that maybe they're misunderstood in just some fashion yeah and I, I think this this story really sort of takes home the well the whole theme of the show which is really this is my my takeaway is that like it's okay to be scared right to show courage is to face your fears no matter how scared you are and i think that's sort of the most that's what's really i mean it's really deep when you think about it this show, right <laughs> oh um, yeah you know, and I love how he uses that courage to, like you said, like sort of, you know, the, the true monster, right? In this, in the episode, there really wasn't, right? It, you know, the idea of like the shadow being something that lived in the shadow of some horrible man, right? Mm -hmm. And all courage did was like, what do you want to do with your life? <laughs> all, all he was like, he asked him, he just asked him, like point blank, I was like, what do you want in your life? <laughs> I thought you would really love those segments too because I believe that actually will take place in multiple episodes as we go on and talk about how like Courage will do the therapy session thing and like pull out the chair and just sit there and he's like I'm here to listen to you <laughs> yeah yeah um, and that like just because yeah you're in the shadow of some awful person doesn't mean like you have to be awful too right and like you get to yep. be your own like yeah no but I love I, I did I just I, yeah I, that, the whole therapy thing is was quite, quite <laughs> wonderful <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So for people on your channel who don't know, yes, I am a therapist. That's why this is why we find it very funny. <laughs> yeah, that's why that's yeah, often why we talk about it a lot is I always ask Steve's opinion because therapy scenes are a, a very hot topic when it comes to horror movies or horror TV shows. <laughs> yeah. You know, and like a lot not not a lot of shows and movies like get it, you know, you can't, I mean it's a it's entertain entertainment, so you know, you don't have to be 100% accurate. But yeah. like, yeah. 
Yeah. You want some effort. authenticity. You want some, some authenticity. authenticity. Yeah. yeah. And there's, I mean, lately, because mental health horror has become so huge, um, a lot of films are getting it pretty right now. Like lately, I mean, there's been a big, big, more, like a lot more focus on mental health in general. So that's good. But but Courage is doing it in the '90s, and uh, you know, I love it. Right. Oh, <laughs> and as a matter of fact, '99. That's when this uh, show started. It was '99. That's when it premiered a lot of these episodes going into the year 2000. So since we talked about our first segment, Steve, would you like to introduce the second segment that we are going to talk about? Mm -hmm. So this is Dr. LeQuack, an amnesia specialist. Uh, so Dr. LeQuack, I guess he's a reoccurring villain. I, I found out just yeah. sort of in the research. So yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't remember him coming up that much, but I guess he does. Uh, so yeah, but this episode, so while repairing the roof of the farmhouse, Eustace accidentally hits a loose board, which flies down on Muriel, striking her in the head. She ends up suffering from amnesia. Uh, and uses uses this opportunity to throw courage out of the house and convincing her that she is a slave woman. So uses is a real uses <laughs> <laughs> this is a real villain here. Um, that you know she real gender norms that he's pushing. Uh, but courage calls the help of Doctor Lequack, um, who realizes that he is a French duck impersonating uh, a real doctor, and then you know things ensue from there. <laughs> it was a lengthy uh, synopsis, actually, but that, I got that from Wikipedia. So they really put a lot in that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that's the lengthiest one out of the ones we're going to be talking about. Yeah, to I know. It was an outfall. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, and, and some choice words. I mean, yes, Eustace is re a real villain here. <laughs> I know. Like, his first thing, like, to think of when Muriel is, has amnesia is to say that and, like, you know, make her do all the chores and like oh I'll, anything i think of you're supposed to take care of me i was just like oh wow <laughs> i know i well that's the thing. uses is living in the 1940s here you know what i mean like and beyond it's like <laughs> well, you know it's, you know what is not in sort of doing the prep work and and, and looking at the show you know a lot of a lot of people point out that use this really at the core of it is like the true villain in a lot of these episodes Right, you know, Muriel sort of being this like, um, you know, this unconditional love for courage, and there's this unit, and then Yusuf sort of being the antagonist between yeah. the two, and um, I'm sure there's a lot you could read into that. Oh yeah, and I love the fact that Muriel is like there are some times where she is very down, like said for courage, and she's like, oh no, you and sticks up for him, you know, and like takes the rolling pin to Eustace or something like that, you know. What I mean? <laughs> It just makes me wonder, girl, why are you with him in the first place? Like, what? Well, you know, come on, Mariel. He, he's not rich or nothing unless it's all his land. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> and it is a lot of land. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere, but it, there is a lot of land. <laughs> oh, yeah. The one thing with this episode that stuck out with me for sure was the, the French music, like the theme music for Dr. Lequack. I thought was hilarious. That like really yeah. sticks out for me. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, did you think of his character in general? Oh, so it's super funny. Um, you know, it, it, it's funny because this one, it, it, where the first segment really sort of leans a little bit more into the horror, I think this sort of shows a bit more of the comedy side um, yeah. uh, with, with some dark undertones, right? Because I think where you're, the balance is, is like the darkness, you know, the, the horror is sort of like Eustace's mindset here. And then the horror being that there are doctors and people who take advantage of situations and um, you know, like the, the, there's horror in real life and, and, and sort of those very human motivations, right? Oh, yeah. Um, That's what's crazy is this show does, like you said, root itself in a very grounded reality in terms of what it pulls from. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Um, but again, so here, I, so I, I always love the, um, you know, a lot, this sort of seems to be the setup for a lot of the episodes where it's courage. He's looking for help. Help comes and help's not what you think it's going to be. <laughs> you know? Um, also, <laughs> the computer in the attic is very funny to me. Oh, the voice. I know the voice. That voice sounds so familiar, too. That I, I forgot to look yeah. that up, but I love the voice actor for the computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I just, just love the fact that they have this, like, computer in the attic that I think only Courage uses, at least from what we've seen in these episodes. <laughs> yeah. And, like, for you know being in the middle of the nowhere there's just like there's this one computer with internet access <laughs> um but there's no other technology it's just hidden in the attic somewhere yeah and there's no neighbors to speak of like i said it's literally the only thing they have maybe besides the tv besides the little tv that he has but the tv is like something out of the 50s 
So it's like the I just sort of I well, I love that because that's also very common in like horror or like you know these sort of weird trippy um, sort of uh, films and TV where it's like a lot of things don't make sense time wise right things sort of in and out of time periods and it's sort of like these vague um, yeah it's just like a vague time period which is kind of cool yeah I like it because you can't really date it for for me what I call back to is like it follows. The director did a really good job with that film and trying to not date the movie. So, like, the cars are from the 70s, mm -hmm. but people have cell phones, but the music is, like, from the 90s. So, it's like you can't really date the film and on a reason because of that, you know? <laughs> it's pulling from all different time periods, right? Which is really yeah. cool. I mean, at the latest, it has to be, I guess, technically the, the, the newest thing in the movie, right? Which would be the cell phone, right? Yeah, I mean, technically, right? I mean, yeah. but you're not dating it. We're like, you know, it doesn't, it, it's not going to age poorly because of oh, yeah. what's in the movie, right? <laughs> so, yeah, um, this one I think was just really fun. Like you said, I liked it a lot too because it's comedy heavy. And mm -hmm. that's what's cool about the segments is when you have two segments in an episode, you could kind of capture people's, you know, attention really quickly and get them to laugh or get them involved in this, but then, you know, carry on to a new segment and just keep them just, a, just as involved with it. So I yeah. like the fact that this one has a different flavor from that first segment. Yep. And it did give me my big, my biggest laugh out of these three that we watched. Actually, <laughs> it was just such good comedic timing. It was in the beginning when Eustace is working on the, on the roof. And when he tosses the wood, there's just like this sort of moment where you hear the bonk and then you just hear courage go like, no, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just such good timing and the way the setup was great i'm like it i yeah that had me like cracking up um but yeah no i don't know makes makes me miss like cartoons like this you know i thought to say right. that, you know, kids these days don't know i mean there's good cartoons now but um, yeah it's just this a is a very this is, yeah this is a very special one like i said for sure and now we're on to what segment episode two segment three which is going to be let's see if i can pull it up courage meets bigfoot in this episode a reward is offered for bigfoot's capture filling eustace with a greedy bloodlust courage who eventually befriends the creature after at first being terrified prepares to defend him from his avis uh a viscerous, uh, bleh, if I could read that, his master. <laughs> I'm, always, <laughs> I'm awful at reading sometimes, just to let you all know. <laughs> av avaricious. Avaricious. There's very, very descriptive words in this Wikipedia. The only, word that I, <laughs> the only reason I know that word is because it's used in How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, that's how I, I don't know, that's the only, but that's how I learned that word, where he goes, the avarice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, oh, but anyway. Um, oh, so, yeah, so but this this one. yeah, did you like this one? Do you like the Bigfoot design on this one? Did you like him? The Bigfoot design is really cute. I mean, it's very 90s, the like, but they will they'll, they'll like overdraw certain features of a character, but then they'll have like really skinny legs. <laughs> yep, <laughs> you know, it's just like toothpick legs, but like pancake feet. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's got like he had like the balding head, but all kinds of hair right here. And like one really big eye. That, that's a very. I mean, I remember that. It's like they they would have those. That design sort of goes back to like the eighties, right? Because I always think yeah. of um because it wasn't like Harry and the Hendersons had something like that. A little bit, yes, I do remember that. Yeah, sort of like a balding. That was like a real person in a suit, but like this yeah. like idea of like Sasquatch Bigfoot having like a bald head and like just like a lot of fur here. Um, <laughs> but it was really there was a lot of fun little gags here. I'm thinking like the pie, the pie. There's a, pie, a bit with the pie in the window. Yeah, this where Bigfoot just wants the pie, <laughs> to eat. but it's just sort of creepy. And then he, you know, and then Muriel's just like the pie because the pie is on the floor or whatever. And she's like, oh, I'll just I'll make yeah. another one in the morning. But you know, you should use a fork next time or use a plate or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was such a fun gag. That called back to just that reminded me of like Tom and Jerry stuff. Like it just reminded yeah. me of that kind of era. You know what I mean? That little comedy gag. <laughs> Very. Um, What's 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 the um, what's the company? Uh, Hanna Barbera, right? Very sort yeah, of Hanna Barbera, yeah. that old timey, you know, slapstick kind of comedy. Um, also, a lot of heart with this one as well. Um, I don't know if you want to hop right. Well, well, what are your thoughts? And then we'll then okay. I'll go into the end because I don't want to yeah, get too too <laughs> far ahead. 
This one, I like the fact that, again, we have Eustace, again, being a kind of our main antagonist, you know, his greed taking a hold of him and, you know, wanting, which isn't even a big prize. What was it? It was like $25. I and a, bought and a membership somewhere. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. It was advertised. So it's like it wasn't really anything spectacular. But yeah, Eustace being the main antagonist. But I like the fact that they had the art design and the colorization and the drawings in this one were so interesting, especially when we brought in like the mob mm -hmm. at the end too. Like there's a mob sequence that is almost reminiscent of like, you know, Frankenstein's monster calling back to that yeah. kind of thing. And the way that they sketch and draw the mob and stuff. And we get to this point where courage like ends up befriending the Bigfoot monster and wants to protect him, you know, cause he again finds out that he's misunderstood most most monsters are misunderstood creatures, you know, that just want to be talked to or, you know, understood. So I love that aspect of this show. So or this episode, what did you think? Yeah, no, again, I, I sort of very similar to the shadow segment, right? Where you were just sort of like, you know, what we're afraid of at first is just something that we don't understand yet. And that this the Bigfoot is just sort of like a lost child that wants to play and has a human <laughs> mother, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so is, is Bigfoot just like a really hairy child? <laughs> I don't know. And, and the mother had like this Eustace kind of face going on. It almost looked and, like it could yeah. have been Eustace's grandma or something, or his um, mom. Yeah, she related to him somehow, and <laughs> it's very funny. Um, but I just love that immediately people see this relationship and are just like, and the mom's just like, oh, you know. And then Eustace is like, nope, I'm still going to shackle you and turn you in for the twenty five bucks. For <laughs> real. <laughs> um, but like. The, you know the mob seeing that and being like no you're the villain we're coming after you now yeah um which was a fun sort of twist um and it seems to be again the running theme use the use this is not a good person <laughs> oh no yeah he's definitely the focus of they use him a lot to portray a lot of was it like bad things that were part of the 40s to 50s all the way to the 70s in terms of things that were representations of certain characters they use eustace to really bring that to life in a lot of these episodes yeah, he's sort of the Archie Bunker of the series, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, I mean, even that show, Archie Bunker had his moments. So maybe Eustace will have some redemption at some point. But uh I know we'll we'll find out as we go along. We'll find out. You guys I have to know, stick I along know. with us. I don't remember a lot of this. You know, it's been so long since I've seen these. So I'm like, it's almost it, it's almost like watching them again for the first time. <laughs> I know this is so much fun for us. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, there's very there's some episodes that really stick out, and I do remember. But like I said, in terms of watching the whole series, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, would you like to introduce our next segment, Steve? Yeah. So episode two, segment two, right, is uh, yep. hothead. Um, so tired of being bald, Eustace obtains an experimental hair tonic advertisement from the newspaper, um, with courage, uh, which courage finds has an explosive side effect. <laughs> yeah, so this is cool. This one, well, what do you think of Hothead? I like the fact that this one kind of calls back to consumerism, which is another mm -hmm. thing that is like a really big part of just America in general. It's like, do we really even know what is in the products that we buy? And like, we're just always captivated by those advertisements of like, this is the newest, brightest thing. Get this, and this will help you right now. And it's like, you just kind of want that. You know what I mean? As, a, as an yeah. American, you're like, I want to buy it right now so uh, i love the fact that this one roots itself in something like that you know that really calls back to us as americans <laughs> yeah oh my absolutely i mean quick a quick fix a cure in a bottle right for everything that we don't like about ourselves um <laughs> you know uses is fixing his hair but he should probably be fixing his uh you know he may, he needs a little anger management i think is the point that this episode is trying to make uh, oh yeah you know he's so focused on here but he needs to work on here <laughs> oh, definitely for real. Like, especially, wow. especially the fact that it's just uh, something as simple as, like, you know, Muriel's chair, like the squeaking of the chair, like he can't fix it and stuff like that. Certain things that really just irk him and get to him. But it's kind of wild that you think about it, like, whatever's in that hair tonic stuff gives him, I guess, basically like fire starter telepathic type abilities, I guess. Oh, is what like pyrokinesis <laughs> going on here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, so of course, Courage is the first one to know that something's up because Courage is in the bathroom <laughs> with this other dude um, <laughs> who flies off the handles because there's no more paper in the dispenser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just like, blows up and then there's a whole hole in the bathroom now. <laughs> um, him trying to mimic that 
just so useless but it was very funny oh yeah that's what like courage is so much fun like the, just in general because of like said the animation style the gibberish but also the when he makes the joke about when he, they call him a certain name his his common joke about how my name is oh, this, my name like, is... yeah yep and he's all but it's not <laughs> like it's just such a funny common joke <laughs> I don't know if this is the one that he said in one of the episodes, he says his name is Shirley, which it's not, which makes me think of airplane. Don't call me Shirley. Yep. Yep. And I was like, that, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, a certain generation made, you know, made this episode. So I'm like, yeah, they got to be referencing airplane, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I also yeah. like the look of Eustace, like when he's kind of going crazy, like the, the pink and red and like the veins and then like his eyeballs kind of pop out like a Boston Ooh, terrier. It's like, <laughs> yeah, the animations. I mean, it's it's funny and creepy, but it's also yeah, it's funny, but it's also kind of creepy, right? The way that it's so, it's so intense in some of the description, right? In the veins, like the lines are so pronounced. We're like, yeah, it's like very yeah, visceral. You know? the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a little like I don't know if I would call it a body horror. A little. I mean, as far it's as far as you can get with a Cartoon Network show, probably. Um, no, but yeah, I would say probably. Weakness. Yeah, I would definitely say Courage probably pushed the bounds in a lot of elements in terms of what hap what you put on Cartoon Network, definitely. <laughs> yeah, without it actually being bloody. We're like, all right, how far can his eyeballs pop out without it being too much? You know, yep. without making it sort of like the like Auga kind of you know popping out effect. yeah the cartoon like where it's just like, yeah. <laughs> like they made it actually look like creepy, like I'm <laughs> out. <laughs> um but yeah no this idea of like again side effects like using something that you don't even realize what the side effects could be um yeah. but also like so yeah i was curious because i thought originally like you just blew up and you ended up being okay but he also made, yeah he makes that driver on the road die <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> yeah, he kills that guy. <laughs> so like, there's like murder happening too. Um, but it was just like again, yeah, they go pretty, they go pretty far with this. Um, but then he gets his just dessert sort of at the end, where they're you know, him, Courage and Miro is like, all right, we're out of here. Well, Courage is like, I'm out of here. She's taking, he takes her out in the squeaky chair, and he's like, the whole yep. house goes up. Like, okay. Oh yeah, the whole house. And they're just chilling in the squeaky chair, which I didn't mind. By that time, I love the fact that by the time we got to the end of the episode, like the squeaking wasn't even a bothersome thing. It was like very comforting seeing him sit with Mario, and it was just like you know, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, things bother you, bother you if you let them bother you. Yep, that's true. <laughs> yeah, it's like how much power you give to it. But yeah, watch your anger. You know, I mean, one of the big takeaways here. No, but oh, this definitely. Is like a Again, not not so much heavy into the horror, but definitely, you know, even if it's not scary per se, like I just love that, you know, there are these references to like Firestarter, Carrie, in some way, you know, in some sense. Oh, yeah. Obviously, and there's good, like you said, there's good uh, themes and messages as well. As long mm -hmm. as with those, you know, there's a lot of good messaging along with all these episodes that we're going to be talking about. Yeah, and I, you know, I. I mean, definitely in this next episode that we or that we're going to talk about, I, I noticed it for sure. But all of these episodes, like like you, you mentioned, the lighting, the camera angles too are really good. Yes. Um, just like shots where like there's a lot of shots like at the bottom of the stairs. Um, they'll do a lot of sort of like suspenseful, almost very like carpenter esque kind of shots. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's well, even well, there is one shot where I feel like it, and not in this one, but I think there's like a Halloween shot at one point. Um, <laughs> I like the but, sound yeah. design too. The sound design is really good with like the boards or like the mm -hmm. creaking of the windows or the wind, the wind and stuff like that. A lot of the sound mixing is really good in these shows too. And, and they do a way of yeah, honing in on like a singular aspect of it and just making it extra grating or extra terrifying from like a dog's perspective too, which is yeah. <laughs> um really interesting um what else I'm saying, a bit the coloring too like like you said going back to like the frankenstein stuff like in book bigfoot or what have you it's like they'll 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 pick a color and they'll really sort of redo entire designs like a lot of cartoons they'll sort of like rinse and repeat you know they don't like re you know you watch something like i don't know um like 
SpongeBob. For, I don't know. I know it's a stupid like, <laughs> comparison, but like the pineapple house always looks like the pineapple house. You know, they don't yeah. really do too much to change it up. Whereas in the coverage, right? It's like there's different shading and different. Like they do hold the like, entire. You do all green. You do all red. You do like there's so yeah. There's so much attention to the way that it looks and feels, which is so cool. Oh, yeah. And that's perfect. Leading us into our next episode, our next segment, which is going to be the demon in the mattress, which is unable to sleep on her old lumpy mattress. Mario orders a new one. But as soon as it arrives, it is revealed that it is apparently harbors an evil spirit, which proceeds to possess her as as she sleeps. So this one is, like I said, leaning into, I thought it was a perfect way to talk about lighting, colorization. There's a lot of greens. Muriel's design is fantastic in this in this episode. And this is a, probably our first episode that really roots itself in calling back to possession stuff, like the exorcist and stuff like that. So there's a lot of scenes that really call back to that. So what did you think of this episode, Steve? Oh, it's one of my favorites. I mean, of the batch that we like watched. I mean, this one and the the, the segment, segment after these two segments back to back are incredible. Uh, but yeah, obviously the Exorcist references. I mean, we can't you know we can't not talk about that. Like from like specific lines of like she's in here with us. There is yeah. obviously the head spinning, the green vomit, the floating on the bed. Like just to a T. They're like, okay, we're we are giving you. Courage's version of the exorcist which is the yeah. demon in a mattress but <clears throat> but also just really cool like um it's you know you, okay this is the you get a little redemption for eustace kind of here like this is the first time we're really seeing him team up with courage to that's, see true. Muriel. that's true so he's not necessarily like trying to kick anyone out make anyone a servant yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, this is so fun. And generally, I mean, like, I'm trying to like, imagine myself being like 10, nine years old again, watching this. I'm like, this is pretty creepy. <laughs> oh yeah. This one is one of those ones that I just like, I loved watching it now. I just adore every moment of it. But like I said, I'm trying to think about being a child and watching this episode and I'm like, what did this do? And I think at that time it was just very captivating. It was just very interesting. Mm -hmm. And it probably just pulled your attention being a child. It was just like, like, look at me, watch me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great thing for a show is like, you know, Courage was one of those shows that, like you said, had strong themes and messages that we discover as adults as we grow up. But as kids, it's just able to captivate us because of the creativity that they put on screen in terms of the animation or the color. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is a real, um, I real eye candy to watch um, with the green coloring, and I think this. I think we get a lot of cool shots here as well. Different angles, different. Like, they definitely experiment yeah. with like how do you present a cartoon in a way that feels foreboding and creepy, and so there's a lot of that ex experimentation that I appreciate. Um, Try to think what else. Oh, the uh, like the incantations. Like, cause, like, he gets the exorcism yep. off of the computer here. Uh, <laughs> so the computer shows up again. Um, this like gibberish incantation. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> and they have um, to wear the garment. Eustace wears one of Mariel's old like a nighty garments and stuff. <laughs> yeah, they wear a flowy garment. So sort of referencing like priest garb, but you know, you gotta just wear a flowy garment, I guess is what you need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, no, it's I mean truly funny. I yeah, I loved the going back to just the beginning of the episode, sort of the the demons taking the mattress from for, I guess from hell. <laughs> oh, to deliver it to them, yeah. And they had the it's crazy like creepy driver, that one driver that was like that was like, yeah, oh, yeah. like, like <laughs> you know, the yeah, the one like creepy eye. Um, like that <laughs> was just really funny. Um and then just yeah, you get this like it's a, yeah the green bed. So the green green mm -hmm. representing the possession in general, right? Because the house is pretty normal until the mattress comes in, right? So yeah. the mattress comes in, everything goes green, you know, sort of like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that that's just, yeah really fun. I'm trying to think of any other any other standouts that you can think of from this one. I thought it was really cute about the ending, just the resolve about how Mariel was able to just call them and tell them like, we don't want your bed. Like we're like displeased with your bed and they came to pick it up again. I thought that was really cute. <laughs> yeah. And she just falls asleep on the couch with courage. Like yep. on her stomach. 
But then Eustace, Eustace gets possessed and hurled off. <laughs> so you're it's just, just like, I, oh man, it's like, I love it. it's the those simple wrap ups for, yeah. you know, 20, 30 minute shows. I love how they decide to wrap them up sometimes. <laughs> you know, funny enough, Eustace being like kind of the antagonist is also sort of like the Kenny from South Park here now because he's died <laughs> or gotten possessed and hurled off like twice now. So he because yep. he blew up in the house in Hothead. Yeah, that's true. And now he got the death and rolled off in this one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you, there's a lot of fun to have with Eustace as much as like you know he's such a negative character. He does get a lot of his up come up upcomings, you know, or come up in a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. It, it, yeah. It, absolutely. And I don't remember if because I made notes. Um, I didn't catch them all right away. I was doing my research as far as a lot of the references, and I can't remember mm -hmm. if it's Demon Mattress or it's this next one, um, Freaky Fred. But um, there are in in um, Courage's Thought Bubbles, you get references to Frankenstein, The Fly, and the Cabinet of Doctor Calgary. Oh wow, um, uh, that makes me want to watch this again. That way, I could try to catch this. <laughs> it, they're very quick. I think it's a sort of like when he's going through his gibberish, and it's like quick little flashes. I think it's this one, um, but it could it, it could be a freaky Fred. But if not, it's definitely this one. Um, I think because he's when he's thinking about a lot of the demons and stuff, because you get like Caesar from Calgary, and then obviously Frankenstein's monster and uh, the fly. So. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's in the, it's definitely this episode. I just I forget which segment. Cool. Well, now that we're talking about, would you like to introduce Freaky Fred, our next segment? Yeah, Freaky Fred, uh, which I know this is a big one for a lot of folks. Uh, so Freaky Fred, uh, Muriel's unsettling nephew, Fred, a barber by trade, visits the farmhouse. Courage learns the hard way of how much Fred enjoys his profession. So an obvious reference to the, the demon barber of Fleet Street, Fleet Street yeah. you know, Sweeney Todd. Um, <laughs> what, what do you think about this one? I thought the Freaky Fred character is probably one of the best, most standout characters in the show in general, in terms of just remembering the show. Even if you've only seen this episode a couple times, I think you'll probably remember this character if somebody showed you the character or talked about it. He's got such a cool suave just way about him you know what i mean where he comes off kind of like kind of nice and you want to get to know him but he is creepy you like you know what i mean mm -hmm. but he's got this weird just way that he presents himself and stuff and then the design of the character like because he's got like kind of the hunch shoulders yeah. and the really like thin like arms and everything and the hair just kind of all over the place so I, I like hair, like the very scrawny hunch right? and i mean <laughs> The smile, you know, like the Cheshire Which Cat smile, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I love, he narrates the whole episode. That's true. This is the first one where we have, like, an actual narrator of the episode, so just, yeah. So just, I think it's so cool the way that it ties the whole episode. And he's narrating it, but in rhyme. So it's sort of like a whole poem. Yeah. So it almost, so it plays off sort of like a, what are those creepy kid nursery rhymes that are supposed to, you know, like the like so but that was kind of sort of creepy I, i'm trying to I, yeah the know, ones that are like kind of kind of almost like something you tell at a campfire story you know yeah. to tell kids you know warn them and stuff <laughs> about how naughty he is you know so oh yeah, that's but, true yeah. word, naughty naughty, naughty. <laughs> uh, but yeah his whole thing is he just likes to sh shave people <laughs> <laughs> he just gets too overzealous and just wants to shave everything. Just take off all the hair, um, which is so funny. And like the, <laughs> yeah, he so yeah, yeah, he had like a wife who he shaved all her hair. Yeah, you know, he shaved uh, some cowboy. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's going through like his victims. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, uh it just yeah. made me think too hilarious like what if there is like really a hairstylist out there that's just like they're constantly like just doing people's hair but every part of their being just wants to just just, just <laughs> honestly i probably they probably all you know i would especially if you probably get a client that's a real pain or like a, someone you really just can't stand but you got to cut their hair you're like there's i mean i can imagine my, my mom's a hairstylist and i guarantee oh yeah someone <laughs> or she's like, oh, if I just, you know, just take off a little take bit more than I want, you know, <laughs> Ru ruin their day. 
but then they would, but then you know, customer customer wouldn't come back and they lose business. So you know, that's why they don't do that. <laughs> I thought it was kind of interesting too that Freaky Fred is he's related to Mario, right? He's her nephew, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of interesting. I thought that was funny. So Courage is like, this is a family member that he has to deal with. You know what I mean? <laughs> on a consistent basis, maybe. <laughs> Oh yeah, and also yeah, so everyone on her side of family, I guess, because because obviously Muriel has an accent. She's from Ireland. Is she from Scotland? I always, you know, I, I can't place this accent exactly. <laughs> I know it's kind of interesting because I was always wondering, like they, her, and Eustace has almost like an old American accent style to yeah. him, an old frontier accent. But Muriel, yeah, sounds like she's like foreign. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, they're like late 1800s like immigrants <laughs> like, you know, sounds like. <laughs> um from the old world the old country um but yeah but yeah but freaky fred's got an accent to sort of like this very lofty british sort of accent <laughs> and so sure she's irish he's british you know whatever um i'll accept it by face value uh but i think what else about about it? the um the cool thing, though, I did learn. I don't know if you saw that in 2019, there was a uh, an animation collaboration for this one. Oh, so, really? So I, yeah, I have to. I'll I'll find the link so we could put it down. But a, over 120 animators got together and reanimated this episode. Wow, that's fantastic! It's sort like, of as for like real. a nod, and just because <laughs> there's so many people, I guess, love Freaky Fred, so. Oh yeah, he's he's definitely a character. Like when I think about like the villains like that we've talked about recently so far, yeah, Doctor Lequack sticks out for sure, and Freaky Fred mainly because they're just these iconic villains with this presentation and this very charismatic way about them, and I think that's why they stick out, you know, and they root themselves in you know pop culture. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I because it, it had been a long time, but I I, I remember the smile. <laughs> I mean, the one that stands out to me is like the smile I remember, and of course the slab is the is the other one that I I always like. That's my go to. I don't I forget I don't know what episode that is, but we're gonna get to that. I forget which one. Oh yeah, has to. But we're gonna you know, return the slab. We're gonna get to that. But uh, um, there's so many. Yeah, but that's what's um, gonna be fun. This is gonna be a really fun series for sure. And yeah, I mean, and so so he so we, I guess we find out because he's got like a bracelet from like. For I guess demented barbers. I guess he's from like yep. he's in like a, he escaped a psych, psych ward for barbers. Yeah. So basically, courage calls them to come pick him up. You know, come bring him back to the house. <laughs> yeah, and they have like sort of like this high tension kind of. They get trapped in the bathroom together, and it's that so that's like sort of the whole like there's this, this big like thriller suspense moment playing out between the two of them. Oh yeah, that scene is like, oh wow, like it's so fun. It, it's but when you watch when you watch it as an adult, you're like you fun and you laugh at it. But I bet you as a kid, I was probably like, damn, like get out of the bathroom. You need to get it, like get out of the bathroom. Like, <laughs> it's intense. It's very like, yeah. I, I'm trying to think of like a a scene from a movie that I, you know, I can really compare it to, but um. For know, me, I almost like... think of, it's not a horror movie, but for me, what I think of it is like bouncing off of each other wise. Is almost like uh, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro and Heat, like just seeing oh, like yeah. two characters when they're in the diner, just kind of bounce off of each other. But you're so invested in the tension that's going on. That's what it kind of felt like for me a little bit. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, I was just getting like sort of like a general nod to like thrillers in general, like like Psycho or you know, I'm trying to think of like like Cabin, um, not Cabin Fever. Oh, that's Cabin. Not, uh, that has nothing to do with. It. <laughs> Uh, what's the one with Jessica Lang, um, and and, uh, and Robert De Niro? I'm trying to think of that. Oh wow, that's gonna that's gonna hurt. it's gonna hurt us, man. I don't know what to yeah, I'm like totally blanking on the name of it. But anyway, it's sort of like yeah, just like those sort of classic thrillers where you have like yeah. two characters locked in a situation and you just want one to escape. And I love I love that sort of as a general nod to like a story structure. Versus maybe yeah. like a specific movie. Yeah, that's what's cool about the show. Is like I, the the people who wrote the show definitely are people who, like us, are probably just grew up as hardcore fans of TV shows and movies and 
and like set horror, but also thrillers and also comedies. And they wanted to create the show. And you can tell the writing that they actually care about the show and they wanted to put a lot of the stuff on screen. And I think it's fascinating, especially when you make it as like said a G or a PG rated cartoon for kids. It's really a fun introduction horror thing for kids. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, um, <laughs> This might be one that I show my son when he's old enough, just to get him, you know, <laughs> get that introduction started. I mean, yeah. I mean, are there a lot of like modern? I know we're getting a little bit away from the episode now, but um, are there a lot of modern like horror for kids? Oh, nowadays I would actually say I watch a lot of stuff with my son, and modern cartoons lean more into the fantasy. That's really big now, like yeah. Lord of the Rings or Adventure Time. You know, adventurous type stuff. Even uh, there's Craig of the Creek. That's another show that's kind of very adventurous and stuff, and they mm. focus more on the fantasy elements and the imagination type stuff. Right, right. Well, yeah. I mean, I know uh, Adventure Time specifically is very D and D heavy. I mean, even the logo. Yeah. Right, is from I think the fourth edition D and D or something or three point five. It's like one of those. Um, yeah, but anyway, which is fine, you know. Though, though there's I'm sure there's some horror stuff out there. I mean, I know they tried rebooting. Um, they have a few seasons of Are You Afraid of the Dark now on Nickelodeon. Yeah, um, mini series though. They don't do long seasons. They do like little little stories every year. Uh, sort of like Nickelodeon's American Horror Story now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, but overall, yeah. So I would say these two, uh, the demon mattress and freaky Fred are my, are my favorite favorite of this batch. Not to say that the others aren't good. It's just that I think these definitely called to the most horror movies called, you know, just had, had the most, um, yeah, like references and the most sort of, they had the most fun with like the horror aesthetic yeah. as far as coloring and lighting and coloring and, and camera angles or, just sort of using all everything in the horror toolbox here. Oh yeah. It kind of felt like this was them kind of more comfortable in their niche and they knew what they wanted to be. You know, those first few, uh, first four segments was them kind of, you know, discovering their footing. And then now it's like, yeah. Oh, we know what we're going to be now. Let's play around with it. Now let's, let's get funky, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. So you want to give us uh, like a sneak peek of the next few episodes that we're going to be covering? Maybe in case oh, anyone okay. wants to list it if you wanted to. Yeah, you can totally list them off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the next, so we had, so we ended with Freaky Fred. So the next batch of episodes, if we stick with three, it's going to yep. be Night of the Mole and Mother's Day. It's going to be the Duck mm -hmm. Brothers and Shirley the Medium. And then King Ramsey's Curse and the Clutching Foot. So those are going to be the segments we're going to cover. Sweet. Thank you so much, Steve. That way, so all of you watching along and everybody that's going to tag along with the series is able to watch, you know, and keep up with us and stuff. Yeah. And you'll like this. So I guess, I mean, you can't trust everything you read on Wikipedia, but I guess King Ramsey's Curse was shown as a bonus episode on a home video release of Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders. Nice. That's what's fun is a lot of these episodes, they're, because they're so tied with Hanna-Barbera, this is really mm -hmm. fun because if people don't know, I've done a whole Scooby-Doo deep vibe and watched every season and talked about every show and, you know, ranked all of them. So this is really fun as this is kind of the next venture for me, you know, joining and Steve joining along for us to talk about some other cartoon content. <laughs> I mean, peek behind the curtain. I was very impressed with what you did with with Scooby Doo. That was so I was like, we should do courage. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Is like it was this thing, and then that day too, right after we talked about it. I remember I messaged you right, like right after we did our live stream or our recording. Courage, the cowardly dog was on my TV, like in the living room. Yeah. <laughs> so I told I told Steve too. I was like, I think it's just serendipity. It was meant to be, kind of thing. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And it was just a sign from nowhere. <laughs> yep nowhere that's right so thank you for tagging along with us all for watching this episode i hope you all enjoyed this episode as we talked about the first three episodes or first six segments of courage the cowardly dog we're going to be on to the next ones this uh kind of series we'll probably do it like probably like every other week you know kind of thing or maybe do a bi-weekly thing because you know me and steve we both got a lot of other stuff that we do for our channels and our families so we'll probably you know try to keep it a bi-weekly thing which will also give all of you out there time to binge and watch these episodes that way you're caught up when these episodes drop oh yeah there's a lot of courage out there i mean three episodes uh or three yeah three so well, six segments an episode right so yeah yeah you know, it's a lot of courage is awesome <laughs> 
<laughs> but thank, <laughs> thank you for you. having me. This is, this is a blast. I, I'm really happy I'm, we're doing this. I know this is going to be a lot of fun. So everybody down below, please, I'll have the links and everything for Voices from the Mausoleum down below. We'll have links for everything else to find us and all that kind of stuff. Facebook, you know, Twitter, X, anything, whatever, formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> we'll have all those links down below and all that stuff so you can find us. And like I said, like, subscribe to the channel. We all love the support. And thanks for sticking around with us. Peace out, y'all.